us pray. Dear gracious and loving Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord, to reach down and touch your word. Open up your word to us and help us to receive from your word what you'd have us to receive. We ask for your guidance and direction. We ask for your, you to show us your will and way in all things. In Jesus' name I pray, Lord. Amen. Let us turn to Luke chapter 4. We're going to start with the 31st verse. That's Luke chapter 4, starting with the 31st verse. That's Luke chapter 4, starting with the 31st verse. And came down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath day. And they were astonished by his doctrine, for his, words was with, for his word was with power. And in the synagogue there was a man which had a spirit of an unclean devil, and cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know that thou art the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What? A word is this, for with authority and power he commandeth the unclean spirits, and they come out. Well, this, my backup recording is not going to be of any use, because I just now remember to turn it on. Now when we take and we look at this particular passage, we find that Jesus came and started teaching them the word of life. And he taught it with power. But the, uh, but the demoniac, the person possessed by a devil, he reacted in a negative uh, fashion. And what have we to do with thee? Leave us alone. Have you come to destroy us? You know, that's technically how our society reacts to it today. Just like the demon. Leave us alone. What do we do with you, Christ? They take and hold on to uh, pagan beliefs, they hold on to wickedness, they hold on to all manner of deceit, and many of which claim to be children of God. They take and uh, teach lies for the truth. And just like this demoniac that was in the synagogue, they may be sitting in, in pews and churches, or even standing behind pulpits, but they have nothing to do with God. Instead, they take and do things their own way, or the devil's way, but not God's way. Let us turn to Romans chapter 1, starting with the 21st verse. That's Romans chapter 1, starting with the 21st verse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were, was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changing the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore, God gave them up to uncleanliness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed 
forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up to vile affections, for even the, their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature, and likewise also men leaving the natural use of woman, of the woman burned in their lust towards other men, and men working that which is unseemingly, and received in themselves the recompense for their error, which is meat. And even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind and to do those things that which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, mal and maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, uh, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do they do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Now that's a pretty accurate description of our society today. Many, many would say, well, what, what do you mean we've changed the image of God into a, an image of nature? Well, think about it. They have started worshiping nature. Instead of worshiping the creator who created nature, they're worshiping the creation. We hear all kinds of, of, of people taking and standing up in the public forum proclaiming global warming and how man's destroying the earth. Well, in the first place, man couldn't destroy the earth if they wanted to. We don't have that kind of power. When the earth is going to be destroyed, God will do it. They totally ignore the fact that seasons have always taken and come and gone. Ex weather goes through cycles where you have cycles of cold and cycles of hot. Periods that change constantly. They said, well, it's weather, it's they used to call it global cooling back in the 70s. Then they went to global warming in the 80s. Then, and now it's climate change. You can't argue with climate change because climate's always changing. So the argument is, is man causing it? No, God set it up. He controls the cycles. We don't. Man would have to be God to do that. They're elevating man to a position he hasn't got the ability to control. Now, is the climate changing? Yeah. It always has. But man can't, isn't the one doing it. I remember several years ago, there was a conspiracy theory that came out saying that the U.S. government was uh, developing a super weapon to control weather to t so they could cut off the rain to some parts of the world and flood out other parts of the world and bring in typhoons and the horrible storms to, com to destroy our enemies. They'd have to be God to do something like that. We don't have that ability. There's many things that they've taken and have convinced themselves that man is so intelligent that man can do these things that, that only God can do. They've bought into a lie. And by doing so, they worship the creation, not the creator. We see the rise of a society that justifies all manner of unrighteousness.
this particular passage lists a lot of it. Everything from homosexuality, fornication, covetousness, maliciousness, murder, debate, envy, malignity. I mean, it just goes on and on. And it's all around us. And why is it all around us? Because people aren't worshiping God, they're worshiping the creation. And they're like the devils. Oh, leave us alone. Don't tell us we're wrong. Don't go through and take and preach that we need to change. That we can't live the way we're, we we want to live. But God says we can't live just any old way. We have to turn from this if we're going to be the children of God. We have to turn from this if we're not bound for an eternal hell. There are preachers, and I use the term loosely, but I guess you can be a preacher of anything, even if it is of Satan's doctrine, who are going through taking and saying that, uh, that God not only condones these perversions, but encourages them. He made us that way. Well, man became an innately corrupt, evil creature when Adam and Eve sinned, not when God created them. We are born after the image of Adam not after the image of God. Well, the only way we can re be restored to the image of God is to have that sin removed and that sin nature. As long as we are living in that carnal condition, we will never please God. That's why Christ came, was to deliver us from that. Not to leave us in it. Not to make that the norm. Society wants to make all manners of excuses for their perversion. But Christ didn't die on a cross so we could be perverted. He died on a cross to save our souls. It's man thinking they're more, uh, they're more knowledgeable than they are and turning to foolishness and believing lies. That's what causes the corruption. Let's go to John chapter 3, starting with the 19th verse. That's John chapter 3, starting with the 19th verse. And this is the condition, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their, his deed be, should be reproved. But he that do, uh, doeth truth cometh to the light, and his, that his deed may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. We, have to know, we don't have to worry about exposure when we're doing the right thing. But the world wants to silence the truth, and many of which are church-going people. Because they don't want their wickedness exposed. The fact that God has called us out of that sin and they're still living in it. They want their corruption and to go to heaven too. And God's the one that's in control and says you can't do that. So they undermine God. They blaspheme him. Say he says things he doesn't say. 
and in so doing are turned over to a reprobate mind. We wonder, where does all this weird thought come from? It comes from a reprobate mind. Their mind's not working right. They've done wickedly to such a degree that God's handed them over to, to a reprobate mind, and they're no longer thinking straight. They need their brain fixed. And, and their heart fixed. They need to be spiritually transformed. To change their hearts and their minds to where they follow God. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 1, starting with the 22nd verse. That's Proverbs chapter 1, starting with the 22nd verse. How long, ye simple ones, Will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called, and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand, and no man regarded it. But... Ye have set to, at naught all my counsel, and were uh, and would n would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity; I will mock when you fe when your fear cometh. That's a pretty scary situation to be in. All because they refuse the knowledge, and it's not. All knowledge they refuse. It's just only true knowledge, the truth. They're willing to accept the lies of the world because they're telling them what they want to hear. <clears throat> Things that couldn't possibly be. Not from the wildest stretches of imagination. And they believe it because it enables them to do and live however they want to. The very notion that something as complex as the human cell, or for that matter, as complex as a single cell organism, could just ha randomly happen is a mathematical impossibility. Uh, it just can't happen. It'd be, we, if we took and we saw a Swiss watch taken up all into little bitty pieces and scattered across the floor, we wouldn't go through it and say, wow, isn't it amazing that those rocks could randomly turn into the, all those little gears and springs? We look at it and we say, you know, whoever designed that is very meticulous and very talented. That's so complex. And yet it's nothing compared to what God has created. Take a simple bumblebee that hadn't got sense enough not to fly into the fire. They've got more intelligence than the smartest supercomputers in the world. And they still don't have sense enough not to fly into a fire. We look at them and we think, boy, that thing's stupid. But the best things man has created can't compare to it. So what's stupid? Anybody who puts more faith in man than in God. God calls, uh, says they've turned to foolishness over wisdom. There's only one thing that can actually defy the laws of nature. That's God. 
So if we want to see something done that defies the laws of nature, there's only one thing we can go to to do it, and that's God. So when, the, when man says, I'm sorry, you're done for, God can still say, well, no, you're not. I still have something else planned. Or man can say, oh, you'll be fine. And God says, no, you won't. <laughs> because he's in control. So people laugh and call Christians foolish. Yet, the Bible says that because of them uh, ignoring his reproof and ignoring his call, God laughs at their calamity. But they put themselves there. For people say, oh well, a loving God wouldn't send anyone to hell. Well, aren't you assuming that God's the one that sent them there? They send themselves there by disobedience. Recently, a man was killed taking and robbing a dollar store. He had the clerk down on his knees, a gun in the, the head, and one of the customers there was a, had a gun and shot him. And the family said, oh no, how awful this guy intervened. He should have just let it go. It didn't hurt him any if, the, if our son shot this man. What kind of perversion do we live in? Over and over again, you'll see on the news those uh, people being interviewed. Dude, a murderer family will stand up and say, oh, well, our child is just such a good ch uh, person. Just wonderful. Yes, they killed X amount of people and in a horrible fashion, but that's because they deserved it. We really know that if they didn't, our son wouldn't have done it. But it wasn't to defend anybody or defend themselves. Because they were evil. And they wanted to rob steal and maim and murder. We have a society calling evil good and good evil. I've heard Christ, uh, prof uh, professed Christians stand up and defend their sinful uh, relatives. And we can't do that. We all have relatives that are living in sin. The position isn't to justify them. The thing is to point them to the truth so they can turn. To show them that there is a better way to bring them to the knowledge of God. Let us turn to Jude, starting with the 16th verse. There's only one chapter in Jude. That's Jude, starting with the 16th verse. These are murmurers, complainers, walkers after their own lusts. Their mouths speak great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken of the apostles and of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves sensual, oh, having not the spirit, but ye, beloved, build up yourselves. Those 
on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So we find that there will be murmurers and complainers and people that walk after their own lust. And we see them all around us. In fact, there are those standing out in front of the Supreme Court justices' houses doing that very same thing right as we speak. Because they might make a judgment they don't like. How many times the Supreme Court made ju judgments that I didn't like, and I never once went and protested in front of any of their houses. But they're trying to bully them force them to decide in a wicked direction to condone murder. To say that evil is good and good is evil and you have the right to murder your children. You would think that we were dealing with the times of Molech where they, had to, where they carried their children and laid them in the burning hands of Molech to be to, to offer them up to the, the wicked God. In our country, millions of people die every year being sacrificed on the altar of selfishness. And now there's a possibility it might become illegal in some states not even all states. They're defending their religion. You know, if Christians defended their religion as strongly as the devil defends his, we'd see greater things happen. Because that's what they're doing. They're defending their religion. Their pagan religion. Christians taking a stand. I know there's not a lot of us. But it doesn't take a lot of Christians to make a big difference. Twelve people turn the world upside down. I think that there's enough Christians to make a difference. But they've, uh, they've convinced Christian, uh, Christians to be quiet and not speak up. Not to make waves. Not to take and disturb the status quo. It has been said that the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court his position is to always preserve the status quo. Status quo is wicked. We need to do what's right. If you know someone that murdered someone, and that murder has become the standard and normal, do you defend them just because it's a status quo? No. You get, try to get them to repent. To turn from it. To accept Jesus Christ, their personal Savior, and become something better. Our society for too long has been contributing to the least common denominator instead of trying to raise people to a higher plane. And the church right along with it. We need to stand up. We need to speak out. We need to confront, rebuke, reprove, and show them the truth. Let us go to Romans chapter 8, starting with the ninth verse. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now if any man 
have not the Spirit of Christ. He is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that, is raised, that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Jesus from the, uh, from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the Spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, we shall die. But if ye, shall, uh, if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God... They are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. If, the, if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. So, most churches teach that while we're alive here today, we're in the flesh and therefore we can't walk in the Spirit. But that isn't what the Scripture teaches. The Spirit teaches, the, uh, the Scripture, Scripture teaches that we can have the Spirit of God and walk in the Spirit rather than in the flesh. We don't have to follow the things of this world. We don't have to be carnal. We don't have to be corrupt. We don't have to be like the rest of the world. We can be better. But we have to submit to the Spirit of God and let Him have control in our lives. As long as we're walking in the flesh, we're going to be corrupt, carnal people. But when we turn our lives over to Christ and we get saved and sanctified, then we walk in the Spirit and the flesh is not in control. We need to take and be making a stand and showing the world what it really means. Too many times false doctrine has been claimed to be the standard for Christianity. Too many times lies have been preached from pulpits and people promoted as the word of God instead of the word of, ma of man or the word of the devil. People don't double check the preacher's words. They get offended if you take and preach the truth. That's because they're walking after the flesh. And the spirit will always offend the flesh because they're going opposite directions. One is death, the other is life. People are always looking for some kind of escape for their problems instead of finding the solution for their problems. Now, Back when I was a kid, down in Texas where I'm from, you couldn't take and buy alcohol on Sundays. In some counties, you couldn't buy it at all because it was a dry county. Now we take and come forward to our modern age. You know, this is a dry county and they still sell alcohol. What kind of dry county is that? It's not dry at all. Not, uh, not if they, uh, not, even they sell alcohol. They just call them clubs, uh, private clubs. They, they take and say, oh, well, they have to have a membership. What does it take to be a member? Oh, just sign your name. That's not dry. But even so, wickedness is wickedness. Now, I'm not saying that outlawing a sin 
is a way to prevent somebody from doing a sin, because that's not the way it works. Just like making something legal doesn't make it morally good. The only way to stop someone from sinning is to get them saved. And teach them they have to live a holy life instead of teaching them they can continue sinning and be a Christian. Hypocrisy reigns. When what should be reigning is the word of God. But if the church walks in the spirit, we have power. And the devil has to flee. Let's go forward and be that outspoken power for Jesus Christ. And watch the world change around us. Mm -hmm.